another segment of Coach's Corner. Here with me today is Coach Willie Bowie. Of, uh, he's a former Pacell High School coach where I graduated from, and so I'm happy to have him on the show today. Um, tell us a little bit about the history of Pacell High School. Well, uh, I went to Pacell in 1968, uh, right out of college. And uh, at that time, Pacell was sort of 60, 40 percent white. Mm -hmm. And uh, the coaching staff predominantly was white and had a few assistant coaches uh, that were black. But uh, the following year, when I became head basketball coach, uh, the student body changed over to like 80% uh, black and 20% white. And what happened was those kids that were seniors graduated, no one else was moving in and the others uh, started migrating out, uh, out of the city. So. Uh, that's the way it was when I first went there. Okay, and what was the reason uh, for them migrating out of the city? Well, that was doing the big changeover. Uh, I was told a lot of stories uh, when I first got there where uh, blacks uh, could live in the reason southeast, southwest, mm -hmm. and the cell was still white is that blacks couldn't move at that time across uh, 39th Street. Before that, it was further back in the 27th Street area. This is why uh, most of the black uh, kids went to Lincoln, Manuel, and Central High School. Mm -hmm. Okay, and tell us a little bit about your personal uh, coaching or athletic career. Well, I'm from Louisiana, Northeast Louisiana, a place called Bastard, Louisiana. I graduated from Morehouse High School, and believe it or not, that school was an athletic, academic hotbed, I should say. Uh, you couldn't play one without a excelling or doing your best in the other. Uh, my high school produced players like Lucius Jackson that played for the Philadelphia 76ers and played with both Chamberlain on the championship team. After that, that was uh, Bob Brown who played with the Green Bay Packers, the defensive tackle. And uh, I guess the list could go on. Bob Love, uh, that was on the team that I played on, he was a senior and I was a freshman. And uh, after that, uh, Willie Parker played for the uh, Houston Oilers and uh, a couple of years ago Bob Love came to Kansas City and he came to uh, Smith Hill Middle School to uh, talk to the student body and recognize that I was a former teammate of his. Mm -hmm. During the time he was producing, uh, uh, pushing his, uh, promoting his book that he has out. So uh, I'm from a hotbed of uh, athletics. I played an all-star game with uh, Evan Hayes. I played against Don Chaney. We all were seniors in Louisiana at the same time. So uh, athletics has been a strong point in my life and in my career. Okay. And uh, off camera we talked about uh, the actual sports that you play. You, you played every sport, you said. Um, how has that helped you in your uh, coaching career? Well, it uh, made me look at the value of athletics. Uh, Athletics during the time uh, I came along was a source of getting an education. Mm -hmm. When you got an athletic scholarship, it meant that you were going to graduate from college in four to five years. Mm -hmm. uh, it had nothing to do with you going to the pros at that time. The pros was not emphasized. I think uh, when you graduated from high school, you knew whether you had the ability to uh, play professional sports. So uh, you were kind of put on the list. Okay. And uh, the pro scouts were looking at you from day one going into your college career. Okay. And how do you feel the game has changed um, since then? Because we know a lot of athletes now, they, uh, they're they looking to go into the pros, whereas before they were looking to just go to college. How's the game changed? Well, I, I think you're absolutely right now. Uh, kids go out and play street ball and what have you with their minds set on being a Michael Jordan, uh, Magic Johnson. When we were coming along, we idolized players like Oscar Robinson and players like that. But we had no intentions or idea that we possessed the skills to follow in their footsteps. So uh, we uh, wanted to go as far as we could. And if pro was an option, uh, we wanted to pursue that also. But the game has changed. Uh, uh, and the fact that players now, to me personally, are not as disciplined as the players were when we were coming up. Uh, we coached, uh, our coaches were 
the uh, the leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, we had stars on the floor, but they looked to the coach for directions, and they did what was asked of them. Uh, we believe in physical training, and uh, I brought that aspect of the game to my coaching career. Uh, at Sale High School sometime, we were known as the fourth quarter team. When you were getting tired, uh, our legs was just getting warmed up, so we won a lot of games during the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had no problem uh, problems with my players. Uh, they knew that uh, I was the boss, and they were to go out there and perform as they were prepared to perform. And uh, I accepted nothing less than that, and they accepted no nothing uh, less than that. And uh, because of this, I think that we brought or uh, continued the winning tradition at sale. I don't want to take credit for something that uh, I had nothing to do with. When I got to sale, they were winning. Uh, all I heard of was sale and Central Rival. But, uh, when I got into coaching, I realized that Southeast was good, Manual was good, uh, Northeast was good. Uh, one of the coaches that I admire so dearly today is Chuck Singer. He had a very, very disciplined ball club. I feared playing Chuck more than I did anybody else because I knew when it came crunch time, those kids from Northeast were going to perform, and it's because of the preparation of Chuck Singer. Okay. And uh, learning from uh, Coach Singer and other coaches, have you de developed a philosophy for coaching and has it changed any throughout the years? Well, uh, since I'm not coaching now, I have to go and dig back. Yeah. Uh, I haven't coached now in about almost 20 years, but uh, preparation, preparation, preparation. If kids go out there not prepared uh, to uh, play the game or play a particular team, this is one of the things that uh, I think six out like a sore thumb now. I don't think the teams are as prepared as we were when we were coaching to play a particular team. Your offense and defense has to change according to the style of offense and defense that you're playing. And this is something that the coaches in the league during that time mm -hmm. did an outstanding job uh, of doing. I can remember playing uh, Westport when I had Anthony Peeler. And uh, for one week, we didn't run our offense, we ran Westport's offense. So consequently, when we played Westport, when they called the play, uh, they knew where the ball was going, that initial pass. If they didn't get the initial pass, they were going to get the second pass. And uh, this made us very successful throughout mm -hmm. my career with the teams that I've had. Okay. All right, Coach, um, speaking of Anthony Peeler, um, who are some of your other players that you, you feel that you produced? Well, uh, that's very easy. I uh, go back to my first year at sale. I had a freshman team that uh, went undefeated. And from that freshman team, uh, three of them moved up to uh, varsity. And you look at Jimmy Blanks, who played for Gardner Webb, that went on to the Houston Rockets. Uh, you look at Otis Jackson, that everybody knows was an outstanding shooter. And then that third person was uh, anybody that was ready for that night. But the outstanding players on that team was uh, Demetrius Liggins, who played at Texas Tech, and Kenny Bell. Uh, those were my two sophomores. And uh, at that time, I had a problem as first year head coach with uh, kids not being eligible to play. And uh, Jimmy Blanks, who was an outstanding player, I didn't play him first semester. And I thought I was going to get ran out of Kansas City because he was truly one of the best players, uh, uh, not only in Kansas City, but in the state of Missouri. Uh, we played, and we played well. Uh, our last game was at De La Salle before he came back. We, was, we had lost about six ball games. Uh, when Jimmy came back, uh, Jimmy understood why he wasn't playing. Uh, from that point on, I think we went something like uh, – 15 and 6, and believe it or not, we went all the way to the state finals. Uh, the first team at the sale to go to the state finals, uh, I guess, for about 30, 40 years. We ended up losing to uh, oh, Bashan in the finals uh, by four points. But that was truly the uh, outstanding team. And after that, I had pe people like uh, James Davis, Thaddeus Todd, just to name a few. 
and uh, we were all uh, playing not just to win the last league, but playing to uh, go to the state because this is what we had become accustomed to. Mm -hmm. uh, then came uh, Anthony Peeler. Everybody in Kansas City knows about Anthony Peeler. Uh, Anthony was an outstanding ball player. He uh, could play any position on the floor. His freshman year, I said, Anthony, uh, you the tallest kid on the team. It was like, you have to be my center. He said, Coach, I'll play center. Uh, Anthony averaged over 20 points a game playing in that position. And uh, his uh, sophomore year, Anthony moved out and played forward. And it just kept progressing. Uh, teams started def trying to set up their defense just for him. And uh, as it progressed, Anthony ended up playing two guard. One guard. It depends on what you threw at us. I'll never forget playing in the uh, tournament of champions. No team in the state of Missouri had won that thing. We went down and uh, we played New York and uh, we beat them by two or three points. We played Memphis Hamilton in the championship game and doing the interview uh, at a luncheon, uh, the coach came up and said, uh, We've been beating other teams by 40 points. We're going to beat you guys by 50. And I looked. I couldn't believe it. I said, well, maybe he doesn't know anything about me and my tactics. I asked every player in there, I said, uh, all of you have lost to uh, Hamilton. I want you to take a napkin and write down what you would have done to beat them or what you would do if you had to play them again. And everybody looked and chuckled. I said, that's all I got to say about the game. But uh, as the game went on, they went up by five. We caught up. They went up by five. We caught up. But the ironic thing about the whole thing was with uh, about five minutes to go in the first quarter, Anthony was in foul trouble. So, oh, my God. We uh, took it upon ourselves to go out and play as if he was on the floor at all times. And... Uh, I'm trying to think of my center's name. He ended up scoring 23 points that night because uh, they just didn't know what to do when somebody else was playing well and Anthony wasn't on the floor. Of course, in the end, he came back uh, second half and he ended up with like 40 points. Uh, I haven't set up that much second half, the first half. But uh, it's important to know that it's a team effort and not just one individual. It's just like if uh, your mom passed uh, the rest of the family got to pick it up, your dad got to pick it up, and uh, life goes on. And uh, we were the first team to win that thing. But I, I think one of the most important things uh, uh, during my coaching career, with, even with Anthony, was that we had uh, tremendous community and parental support. Uh, once the league play was over, went into district play, I wanted to make sure that I knew what my players were doing from the time school was out until uh, after the ball game. So believe it or not, all my players went to my house. The bus that was going to take us anywhere came by, picked them up, took them to my house, and then took, them to, took us to the game. After the game, the bus dropped us off at my, dropped us off at my house. And I guess who was there waiting? The parent. The parent came by. We had a one-way bus to the field house. The parent picked them up and took them home. It wasn't a bus we get and go to the field house and go back home. So it's important for that piece to be in place, the community support. We used to say in my hometown, when we were playing football and basketball, somebody could go in the bathroom and rob the whole town because everybody was at the football and basketball game. So this is one of the things that I tried to bring to sale. And uh, the parent uh, took a hold of it and uh, kept it in place. Uh, the piece you were talking about, uh, the colors in the stands. Uh, all the staff members were there, the principal was there, and just everybody was there. So nobody had to ask anybody on Monday morning or the next day who won the game. Mm -hmm. They knew because they were there. Okay. And how important do you think it is to have a good administration behind you uh, to have your programs? It's very important because uh, they have to understand uh, things like facilities, things like equipment, 
uh, what it takes to build a uh, good athlete uh, body-wise because it changes every year. Uh, when we were coming up, there was no such thing as uh, lifting a lot of weights. You came big, uh, you uh, <laughs> developed physically uh, on your own. Uh, there was no weight room, but now you got weight rooms, you got facilities, uh, you got a parent who are looking for the best advantage they can for their kids. So if they feel that that advantage is in the suburban area, they're going to move in that area if they possibly can. Uh, so it's important that you stay abreast of what is good, what is going on in athletics as far as facilities, uh, as far as training equipment, as far as places to play. Uh, when I first came to Kansas City, everybody wanted to play in Fieldhouse. Mm -hmm. Everybody. It was a state-of-the-art facility. It was huge. And uh, now if you look around uh, in the suburban area, and I guess uh, some of the outland uh, communities close to us, those facilities are outstanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got good traditions. And some of your newer schools, uh, kids team, seem to flock to those schools. And before you know it, they've got a winning uh, program. Yeah. And uh, I've been to most facilities around, and they're unmatchable. Uh, you have to get something that's uh, outstanding in the inner city to match those, uh, those arenas that those kids are playing in. Mm -hmm. All right, and how important do you think it is to have local businesses uh, behind uh, to get the good facilities and to have a sustenance program? Local businesses need to be uh, concerned about the education facility that's in their immediate area because if you have a good education facility, you're going to have people to move in, you're going to have people to visit their businesses. Uh, they need to support uh, the local schools because uh, this is an outlet for that, uh, this is an avenue for them to gain support from the schools, from the kids, mm -hmm. and uh, from the school district. Uh, they need to be a part. Right. Uh, they need to be there financially, uh, emotionally, and uh, physically. Uh, they need to be there so that the kids will know who they are. All right, um, there's been some talk about uh, college athletes and um, whether or not they should be paid. Um, what's your opinion on that? Well, uh, that's a question that's constantly uh, in front of everybody on the TV screen. And uh, you can look at it from several different uh, angles. Sure, there's a lot of money being made, uh, college football especially. Those schools that have those dual sports that are making money like college football and basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, people have to understand one thing, is that now with less money being put into those colleges uh, uh, for salaries and education what have you, that money is used to subsidize increasing salaries for staff members and uh, you can't get around saying that athletes should be paid. There's too much money being made out there for athletes not to be given some type of stipend. Uh, of course we have to realize also that those kids sign a four-year uh, scholarship or five-year scholarship to get an education. Uh, I think that's the bottom line. Uh, nobody's uh, going to school to be paid, but once you arrive and you find out that the head coach is making over three million dollars a year, you got some top assistants that are making million dollars, millions of dollars, and the other assistants are making no less than I'm not sure five hundred thousand dollars a year. So that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, my concern about that is no athlete should be going hungry. Uh, no athlete should be in college without money to clean their clothing because a lot of these athletes come from families that have no money. Mm -hmm. And you go to college and you're out there playing football, looking good every Saturday, and you could have been back home making money to help support your family that had nothing. So these things must be taken into, uh, into account. And even the commentators, I look at them 
And a lot of them are saying, no, 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 no. They're making millions of dollars. You know, <laughs> nobody's looking back and saying that uh, the athlete should be given something. I don't care if it's nothing but $100 a month. Okay. Uh, at the end of the month, they know they're going to get $100. They can go to a movie. They can clean their clothing. Uh, this is why we've had the scandals in the past. Uh, that was a way to move the athletes to a particular college if you had a booster that was uh, giving them money. So and speaking of boosters, put it all in a pot and make it a stipend for the athletes. I, I strongly feel that a lot of problems uh, on the college level, big time programs would be eliminated if these guys knew that they were going to get a stipend, even if they had to do a background on their past, their parent, seeing if they need money. Uh, give it on a need basis. Uh, uh, do something, but there's too much money floating around out there in athletics for the athletes uh, not to, not to receive a stipend or get paid of some sort. All right, is there anything else you want to say to the audience? No, I just want to thank Comcast for having me here and thinking that I was worthy of speaking out and being listened to. And uh, I hope you guys continue success in your endeavor in trying to uh, bring to light some of the important issues about athletics uh, in the Kansas City area. All right. Do you anticipate uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame anytime? <laughs> well, I've been out so long uh, and uh, seems that no one has <laughs> thought about it. And uh, so if I do, that's great. Uh, if I don't, uh, there's tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> All right. And going off what you mentioned, the, the best prepared succeeds. Uh, we'll close with this. Just remember, the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. <laughs>